Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue, trimmed with silver. He weighed in at 125 and one half pounds. In his professional boxing career, he has been victorious 52 times, and 38 of those victories have ended by knockout. Only three times in 55 bouts has he been defeated. This two-time champion comes here tonight ready and determined to show all that he is not only the best featherweight in the world, but among the best fighters in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the two-time world champion, Thomas de Caballeros de Ciudad de Mexico, the baby face assassin, Marco Antonio Barrera. And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the leopard with Adidas trim, and weighing 126 pounds. His professional record is a perfect one, consisting of 35 bouts, 35 victories, including 31 knockouts. And he is rated by most experts as, pound for pound, the most devastating puncher in boxing today. He is a deeply religious man who tonight dedicates his effort to all Muslims and every believer around the world. And at this time, to honor his father and family heritage, he is requested to say a few words. Allahu Akbar! Allahu Akbar! Allah is the greatest! Allahu Akbar! Ashadu anna la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ladies and gentlemen, if I may translate, I bear witness, there is only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final messenger. Peace and blessings be upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, from Sheffield, England, presenting the three-time undefeated featherweight champion of the world, boxing's royalty, Prince Nazi. relatively early, squares his shoulders, and throws power punches. Marco Antonio Barrera is a conventional fighter, but by far his biggest weapon is the left hook, especially to the body. Boy, they've got one of the most straight-laced referees in the business. Joe Cortez is not going to take a lot of foolishness, so be careful of the disqualification. Barrera's got to make certain that he stays solid in every round with a good body shot. Get this guy off of his feet, moving away from him. And the Prince has got to show, come out of his trick bag and make Barrera try to be a showman as well. Barrera boxing, not just waiting in. Gets to the body, wobbles nails with a left hook upstairs. The one thing you don't want to get into is a slugging match with the Prince. It all looks so good at the start. He looks off balance, you hit him with your jab, it shows an effect. You begin to feel like, I can do this easily. That's what Kevin Kelly thought. Ahmed was momentarily dazed, I thought. Conned his way out of it, took some good shots. He's back on his feet. Well, he allowed Barrera to taste his power just a little bit.
boxing and picking his spots. It's a very interesting choice of fight plans by Barrera, and he's making it work very effectively in round one. He's landed two big left hooks upstairs and a couple of shots to the body. Naz hasn't done any real damage. And that left hook that Barrera landed was a hurting left hook. Those are the kinds that make you stop and wonder what in the world you're in the ring with or who. Measured fighter against an awkward fighter. Briefly dazed him early in the round. Later came on to land those hard jabs. George, in round one, the Barrera crowd was going wild every time he connected with Naz because Naz's head, Naz's head swivels around as though on a pedestal of some sort. Is it solely because Naz's balance is so bad that he looks to be affected by every power punch? Absolutely. He's always off balance. That's why you can oh. catch him with the looping shots. Uh, a warning because Naz threw a backhand. Joe Cortez is quicker than any referee to stop Prince Nassim from backhanding with his jab. And the Prince has got a little work under the eye there. That may be a changing factor when the corner goes into the corner and may not be able to give advice. You got to work on his eye. Excellent right hand body shot by Barrera. And he could see the mouse under Naz's right eye as George pointed it out. Now he's got Barrera clowning a little bit. That's what you want. That's what you want if you were the master at that kind of thing. Get the guy stepping in the new waters. English crowd chanting Nazi, Nazi, Nazi. And that's the thing about being in the dressing room so long with all of that playing around. Well, someone is gonna come out very cold, and it was the Prince this time. Notice that Barrera, when they're in close, has his head Keeps his hands very high, very aware of Hamed's punching power. Uh, Barrera's got to make certain when he throws his shots that he's at home. Don't go lunging out there. Oh. Shades of the Cesar Soto bout in Detroit as Barrera hey, hey, is hey. either pulled pushes him Hold down. On. Mark Ratner comes Hold up on. onto the ring apron. Hey, What happened oh. there was Ahmed lunged at him into the clinch and tried to throw him off balance and Barrera responded. I don't want any real tactics. Okay, have you ever seen a police officer put his hand on a fighter during a fight, George? I don't want to disqualify anyone, you that? I don't think I've seen that before. Well, the police better be very careful tonight. There's a crowd that could be easily into the ring. Nassim beginning to become more active. George Foreman referred earlier in the round to the long delay that preceded the fighter entrances here. A delay of an hour as Prince Nassim Hamed had his glove wrapped, re-wrapped, and put on two or three times before finally coming into the ring. Hard left hand by Prince Nassim, countering Barrera inside. The Prince is the aggressor. Right hand on a left by Barrera, rocking Naz back. Expect to see the Prince being the aggressor this early. And Barrera countering him. <laughs> Round two mostly marked by the wrestling. A review of the wrestling incident. There you see on off balance, Ahmed jumps into. Barrera, Barrera holds him by the waist. They dance around and fall to the canvas. And I think Barrera's big complaint was that Naz wrapped his arm around the back of his neck. I think the big complaint is that he made the, made him wait for a long time in that dressing room. He's unsteady about it. He doesn't like it.
round two was fought at a slow pace. 35 punches thrown by Hamed, 31 by Barrera. That is the kind of pace at which Prince Nassim wants to fight. That's why Emmanuel Stewart said perfect when he came back to the corner. Barrera is allowing a man to create and make the fight. He's not initiating anything. Just sits and waits to counter. That could be good, could be very bad. Is it out of respect for Nassim's power that Barrera is fighting the way he is? I think, Jim, it's because they feel that Nassim is more effective as a counterpuncher rather than taking the lead. And they're oh. testing him in this way. Oh, he's hesitant because he's reluctant. That's what he's being. If you're a good fighter like uh, Barrera, you want to stay in there, keep the action going, and take advantage of it. Oh, great. Bring it. Blood on the nose of Marco Antonio Barrera, apparently from one of those left-hand shots by Nassim. Nassim keeps his eyes up, his hands down, his neck is straight into the air. Why doesn't the guy charge him? He's reluctant. You, you must take advantage of all of these openings created by your opponent. So while Barrera, in the weeks leading up to the fight, insisted that he had no particular respect for Nassim's power, he's fighting as though he does. When a guy stands in front of you with his hands down and his neck up, why, what are you waiting on? Ahmed smiling at Barrera. Barrera continuing to fight at a pace which favors Prince Nassim, or at least seems to. When the Prince get into a good rhythm, he throws two rights and then a left. Two lefts and then a right. He hasn't found his rhythm yet. Barrera lands a jab. Prince Nassim grins. Barrera lands a right hand. Prince Nassim grins bigger. It's like a snake charmer, that Prince. Stands in front of a good puncher like that, takes a lot of nerves. Well, he's got enormous reflexes, and he's getting hit here, perhaps more frequently than he expected. Prince Nassim stepping into a straight left hand, glancing blow. The blood is flowing from both nostrils of Barrera. So far, Barrera has neutralized the punching power of the Prince. You stayed in the corner on the ropes and, and he hit you. Wait, hold on. Let me work on this. Next round. That's it. Next round. Okay. And keep roughing him up. You know, when you finish up, get your punches, move his body when you finish up. You understand? Be a little more physical with it, you understand? If you throw a shot and you block it, push it with it, you understand? Uh -huh. Start physically breaking him down now. Deep one. In close, a right hand, then followed by a left of the nose by the Prince, is probably what drew blood from Barrera. And that punch was probably good enough to win the round from Hamed as the two fighters combined to land only 21 punches, 13 by the Prince, only 8 by Barrera. You heard Barrera's corner asking for more activity. They said, you stood still and he hit you. Don't do that. Harold, how do you have a 2 three? Okay, Jim, I got a two rounds to 129, 28. Prince Nassim Hamed. He was just a busier guy in rounds two and three. I think Marco threw enough punches. Jim, what Marco Antonio Brer is doing in this fight is this. He's moving to the left to stay outside of the Prince's lead foot. Lead foot. The Prince is a southpaw. By going to the left, you make him reach with his left hand, which is his power punch. So Barrera's theory in this fight is to move to the left, stay away from that left hand. <laughs> Big left hand by Barrera inside. Stuns Prince Nassim. Naz smiling, but there's no question he was hurt by that left. I have it two rounds to one for Barrera. The Prince is going to get hit a lot because he falls asleep all the time, playing around. He, get, he gets hit because he's off balance, George. Uh, and a composed, played. balanced fighter like Barrera is not a hit off balance, Larry. You just can't measure this guy's movement with your orthodox boxer. He's only off balance when he's doing something that the orthodox bo boxer is doing. 
He hasn't got in one position yet. Woo! He gets hit because Pereira is an excellent boxer who steps inside and asserts himself as he did right there. That's for sure. <laughs> jab and a straight punch to the body by the Prince who seems fully recovered from those earlier blows. When the Prince seems like he has this guy under control, he falls asleep, doesn't pay any attention to what he's doing, and he's, he pays because the guy Barrera is a puncher. No, George, because the guy Barrera is a terrific fighter, <laughs> and you can't you can't relax against a fighter like him. You might get away with it against lesser fighters. Now you see the press watching, watching, steps back like a cat. He recovers real good. Herrera ringing the right hand shot right, to the body. Break out, break out, clean. That right hand was the best shot for the Prince. Good right hand. He seems to be throwing one punch at a time, George. Oh, no doubt about it. That's what happens when you're a puncher. You don't believe in your combination because you think you can take a guy out with one shot. Shooting the straight left down the middle. That's what Prince Nassim wants to do. Barrera goes to the body. Every round, Barrera should send him to the corner hurt with a good body shot. In round four, Marco Antonio Barrera landed the more telling blow. Oh. Very composed, Barrera. That was a hit, but there we see. Right, right hand inside. But the most important thing so far is he has stayed away from the Prince's power. In fact, he's been so scrupulous about staying away from the Prince's power that he doesn't follow up, but he lands a good shot. In the last round, Barrera twice landed good shots, didn't step in to try to follow up with anything. Hunt and Peck were both fighters ever since round one. In the last round, Barrera landed nine power punches, only four for Prince Nassim, and a couple of them were good hard shots. Oh, bring on, bring on, bring on. A good left to the side of the head by the Prince that time. This Prince hits so hard, and he believes in his power. Barrera is staying real, basically, in position to counter with any combination. We've covered Prince Nassim with glory for his punching power, and justifiably so off his record. But if any fighter's been wobbled here, it isn't Barrera, it's Naz. wobbling for the Naz tonight. And Barrera is starting to connect with a left jab. Naz with a quick combination there. Well, you don't want to pick on a rough guy like that in the rough tactics. He can get rougher than you. I think the Prince will find that out with Barrera. Marco Antonio Barrera focusing his eyes on the middle of Prince Nassim's chest and occasionally throwing straight right hands to the body. Now it has become a chess game. The Prince knows that his left hand, his big left hand, has been unsuccessful so far, and they're both looking to find the right way to approach each other, standing in the middle of the ring. Barrera's left jab has been the best thing he's had tonight. Whenever he throws his left jab, it turns the fight around. He's able to pop Naz with it. Here you see the difficulty of trying to get the Prince Nassim's body, although Barrera gets a right hand in there. For the most part, Barrera has been fainting toward the body because as you start forward, as is gone. <clears throat> Big left hand by Prince Nassim. You know, he was right in the pocket that time. He didn't jump away as Barrera thought he would. He just stepped in with this left cross. That's what it was. Yep. Well done, George. This guy has just got the reflexes of a, a 
Crouching Tiger. Something like that. Oh, Ahmed may have won this round. Short left hand. Didn't get his full. Well, as Larry said, it has become a chess match. Generally speaking, featherweight's average throwing about 60 punches per round. Your, your average run-of-the-mill club featherweight might throw 60 punches in a round. In this fight, by copy of box numbers, Prince Nassim Hamed is averaging 30 punches per round and Barrera 39. So they're throwing about half the average number of punches for featherweights. And Barrera is doing the boxing this time. A good job of boxing. Well, you've heard Emmanuel Stewart's opinion as he has now told Prince Nassim in two consecutive between rounds periods, you're losing the fight, you're falling way behind. If this keeps going this way, you've lost your championship. Not only so, he made him tuck his head just a little bit by telling him it looks more like he's doing more damage to you. Rather than saying, there you are. But there it is. The head is too straight up. The head was up. Barrera landed a right. As his chin flung out to the side, that means points. Emmett <laughs> going to a conventional stance, trying to set up a right hand or maybe wanting to step forward with the left. Barrera goes to the body real good for the left jab. A man is best keeping the southpaw position to stay away from that jab. As the head went into the conventional stance, Barrera got up on his toes, ready to throw more jabs. Barrera kept saying for weeks he was going to attack, attack, attack. You wonder whether the prince has been thrown off. Left hand by Barrera there. Well, certainly those of us at ringside have been flummoxed <laughs> because Barrera was convincing about the notion that he would go forward and make it a war, and he's done anything but. He's done a good job of actually boxing tonight. He lands the better jabs, straight right hands, he lands the better. He has confounded the experts, and right now he's confounding Prince Nassim. Uh, 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 Nassim, wake that back here, punch. Let's go. And as the rounds go by, if Barrera continues to pile up points, you might have the specter of Prince Nassim having to go try to hunt him down in the late rounds. He's already trying that. You don't follow a puncher around trying to get a knockout. You let the puncher come to you. That was lovely. While they were in close in a clinch, Ahmed threw a little bit of left hand at him and Herrera came right back at him. That's why he is Herrera. That little by-play on the clinch uh, will tell you that Hamed has found out he's in with a true professional. Hamed, ever dangerous, however. If there's one fighter here who figures to be able to end oh, the fight it, or it, begin it, to end it. it with a punch, you hold ahead, let's go. it is still Hamed. But you cannot depend on one hand, one punch, with a skilled fighter like Barrera. Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at Jim, I got it going back and forth. 57, 57, three rounds apiece. I'm not gonna tell you Barrera opens up. He does real well. The rounds he loses, he just doesn't throw enough punches. He really should move his hands more, Jim. Those three rounds I got him losing were just because of inactivity. All right. I have him ahead four rounds to two. I started to say, even though Barrera's corner believes they're ahead of the fight, and Emmanuel Stewart tells Prince Nassim that he's behind in the fight, Harold Letterman has it even. In round six by CompuBox numbers, Hamed was only eight of 28. Barrera 16 of 51, picking up the pace. That's what you do. A guy expect you to attack him and attack him, you box him. And then when he's depend on your boxing him, you start fighting. That's what Barrera is doing. He's pacing himself. Barrera with a right to the belly and a left upstairs. Naz grins at him. Barrera says, come on. Come on. All right, break. Break out. Break. That's what you want a solid fighter like Bar Barrera doing. Clowning with a clown. Big right hand to the body again by Barrera. 
No nonsense now. Emmanuel Stewart said to Prince Nassim, let your big shots go. And he knows that throwing 30 punches around isn't likely to get it done. Naz beginning to jab more frequently. Those shots on top is not going to do it with Barrera. He's going to have to climb it, bring it down, close to the chin. Ahmed refused to concede before the fight that Barrera was the best fighter he was ever in with. I wonder what he's thinking now. Ahmed picking up the pace with his jab, showing it more frequently, landing it more often. That was a slap by Barrera. Hard shot with the left. Barrera on move. these sludge hammers type shots they haven't been able to get square in the middle yet but he's starting to kick up the power i think i saw blood from the prince's nose the royal nose with some royal blood couple of left jabs onto the royal chin this is the jab jab bubble jab two out of three ain't bad no, particularly not when Naz's chin and head are bouncing around to make these punches look even more effective than they are. Through round seven, it appears, at least our eyes, that Marco Antonio Barrera has fought an effective tactical fight, limiting Prince Nassim's chances to get off with big shots and landing enough of his own to appear to take a lead on the scorecards. Harold Letterman still has them only a point apart. I think the Prince corner didn't see that Prince was moving on and starting to take charge of the fight a little bit. He may have given misinformed him that round. Now for the first time you see the Prince getting closer and closer to the ropes with his back himself. Early on he, he had Barrera moving. Barrera following his corner's instructions perfectly. Jab, 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 jab. Left hand partially blocked. Whoa. One landed solidly. And a right to the body by Prince Nassim. Barrera came back low. I didn't think that punch was low. Cortez did. Which is the only thing that counts. <laughs> My point. Thing about Prince, when he doesn't have anything else, he's got power. And he lands another left hand upstairs. Herrera suddenly dispensing with the jab. Naz stalking and trying to land that left foot. Finish up, Prince. When oh, Prince throws one shot, it doesn't even matter if he comes back with another. He's got to finish up with his right hand. He throws a two-punch combination, he can get a knockdown. But he's off balance, George. Not with his feet always, but with his body, the way he bends his body. It's effective against most fighters, against all fighters, until... Barrera, but Barrera is so balanced, so on top of him. Well, it's like a snake and a mongoose. Hang up, hang up, One's off balance if he's doing what the mongoose doing. He's off balance. This guy's watching everything going on the Prince. He just got hit that time because he didn't come back with his uh, right hand, left hand. you got to finish up. One, two, three, and he's in business. Best punch of the round, right here. Barrera goes under a left, comes over. One problem with Ahmed, 
He throws that big left out. hand. When he misses, he is off balance. Off the floor. He is in against a complete, experienced, yet still in his prime professional fighter from a culture of professional fighters. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, six to three, 87, 84, Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I think he's won the last four rounds because he's opened up, thrown power shots, hurt the Prince, landed the real telling shots. The Prince is not throwing that left hand at all. You haven't seen a real hard left hand for the Prince, at least in the last four or five rounds. So Marco Antonio Barrera really winning this fight the last four rounds. He's thrown the left hand, but he hasn't thrown anything with it. He's missed it. Oh, He's depending it, on it, one it, punch it, too it, much, it, George. Well, this corner for the first time told him to put together five shots. And I believe him, if he can put together a combination as he just did, things can change, but he's going for one shot. He can't. Herrera is countering him too well. He will not look to get the counter puncher by throwing combinations. That's the way you stop the counter. Throw combinations. He's not a combination puncher, punch George. He's a one punch at a time slugger who's getting hit too frequently to get it done here. There's a big left hand. Herrera covering up. Herrera's playing possum. He's There's playing a hard up. right hand by Nassim. And Herrera comes back with two left hand shots of his own. We could have fireworks down the stretch if Prince Nassim feels the urgency of this situation. right now. I want it. Well, I want it. I want it. I don't know how you could dismiss a fighter of Barrera's class that easily. I'm sure he was wondering the same thing. Barrera's doing a good job. He stays on balance. Doesn't lunge out now. He's making the Prince reach in. Waiting for a counter punch. Still going for one point at a time, one shot at a time. The combinations have been thrown by Barrera. Ten rounds in the books. Brent. Prince Nassim Hamed, 83 out of 246. Marco Antonio Barrera, 125 out of 333. Barrera throwing significantly more, landing significantly more. Barrera, 62 to 36 head in power connects. Round nine begins. The first round of Prince is trying to keep his right foot on the outside of Barrera for a change. He hadn't been worried about that early on. You see the Prince just will not finish up with a shot. One, two, three, and he's in business. George, it appears that every time the Prince has a new tactic to try, Barrera has an answer for it. He never tries throwing one combination, the Prince does. He comes back, he can do it. He's got to come back with some kind of punch. You see, one shot out. Now the Prince has got himself in a position where he has to look for a knockout, which is when you can get knocked out. Still didn't come back with another. Now the Prince has got his rhythm going just a little bit. Lunge 
trickling from the right nostril of Barrera. The corner's been doing a good job with Barrera keeping the bleeding down. They stop it instantly. Very professional. Left hook to the body by Marco Antonio Barrera. Matt is not doing a lot of left hands. Barrera is looking at the floor, trying to distract Barrera. Fat chance. Left hook upstairs by Barrera. As if to say, I'm not fooled by your antics. Barrera is one tough cookie. Doggone right. Nassim Hamad to try to rescue his unbeaten record and his superstar status. Six minutes left for Marco Antonio Barrera to try to rise to the top of the featherweight heat. Hard right hand by Barrera. All right, break, break out, break out, break out, clean. We go, we go. He's way behind, and even punches. Larry Merchant is in Prince Nassim's corner with Emmanuel Stewart. Larry, what's up? Emmanuel, do you believe that the Prince needs a knockout to win this fight? Beyond a doubt, I definitely believe he needs a knockout, and I have told him as such. But see, even the, I don't think he's ever been hurt in the fight, but when he gets hit, his head is up so to the point that it looks so bad to the crowd. Is it, but, it, but is this the Barrera that you were concerned about, who you saw in his last fight and said this is a different fighter? Yes, it is. A very determined fighter. And after you punch, he counter punches. Immediately he comes right back with punches after you finish. And he seems to be very focused and very well trained from Naz. Naz has got to try to land a big knockout punch, even at the risk of possibly being knocked out himself. Thank you. In round 11, despite the scenario that Emmanuel Stewart just quoted to you, it is Marco Antonio Barrera who has been the aggressor. He's not the aggressor. The no, Prince is no, bringing no, the fight no, to no, him. No, no. He's just landing more shots. <laughs> well, he's getting the chances to get off, I guess is what I mean here, yeah. George. But he's not the aggressor by any means. No, I hear what you're saying. He's taking advantage of Naz's aggression to turn it against him. And Naz will not come back with any shot. Huge but right hand by shot. Barrera. All right, break out, clean, break out. Break out. After Prince break Nassim out, had out, the edge in power shots in round 10, Marco Antonio Barrera has landed several big shots in this round. And the English crowd is seated and quiet. The improvisational style that the Prince has developed since he was a boy is being exposed by a well-schooled boxer-puncher brawler. The Prince always seemed to think there is a chance to get a knockout. Well, there is, George. There is. But not when he's running like that. Not when your fight plan becomes a flight plan. Left hand right, inside by Hamed Landon. Barrera wrestles the Prince into the ropes. They're three minutes away from the conclusion. Going to the 12. 106, 103, seven rounds to four. Marco Antonio Barrera. Jim, I gotta tell you, he may have lost the 10th round with Barrera, but boy, he had a huge 11th round. So in the last six rounds, Marco's won five of them. And I tell you, I think the secret is he stayed away from the Prince's big power and he landed the better shots. Look at the right hand by Barrera. He wants to close the show with authority. His corner told him to just box and he's not taking that advice. He's going for it. 
He's been on the wrong side of at least one decision here in Las Vegas. He doesn't want it to happen again. A reckless Prince Nassim goes charging right past Barrera. That looked like one of his entrances flying through the sky. If you close strong in a fight, all things can happen. So the fight is not over for the Prince. You just got to close strong. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Okay, let's go. No, leave you, no, leave you. Clean run, guys. figure out how can he get in one big left hand. He's been trying to figure that out all night. I think Barrera has already shown with his chin, one left hand won't do it. That's true. Too much chin. Barrera pounds Nassim into the ring post, risking disqualification. Curious at Naz's antics. Time out. One point. for a veteran fighter to have to in that gloves. position. Barrera doesn't want to touch any gloves. Barrera wants to hit. Big left hook by Barrera. Scintillating round for the Mexican star. He seems to be the stronger at that weight. Absolutely. Stronger and better. Prince Nassim Hamad and every writer would listen before the fight. And if he loses, it's because it has been written by Allah. The 12 rounds you've seen here suggest that Allah knows how to spell Barrera. B-A-R-R-E-R-A. -R -R -E -R -A. You should be cool on that. His moment of truth has turned into an hour of torture. Let's take it up to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand, we go to the scorecards. Dwayne Ford scores it, 115 to 112. Chuck Champa has it, 116 to 111. And Patricia Jarman Manning scores it, 115 to 112. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Marco Antonio. Rounds of the fight. When Barrera posted huge advantages, he winds up landing 87 more punches than Prince Nassim, throwing 144 more punches than Naz, landing at a higher connect rate. There will also be an edge for Barrera in power punches. Even though Naz didn't throw that many jabs, he landed 69 of 167 power punches. Barrera landing 60 more, throwing 96 more, and landing almost half his power punches against the Prince. Larry Merchant stands by with Marco Antonio. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Marco Antonio, for a great fight. You said before the fight you were going to attack, attack, attack. Did you know you were going to box him? No, yeah. si yo recuerdo, I remember that. That when I fight, I put pressure all the time. But in the gym, we work, move fast all the time because Hamed is paying my students, put pressure, put pressure. They change in the fight. Yeah. Uh, he, he said they, they changed the style because they, they knew that, that he was expecting a lot of pressure, but he surprised everybody. Was the secret to the fight for you to stay away from his powerful left hand? And how did you plan and achieve that? El secreto de, de la pelea para ti era mantenerte fuera del poder de la mano zurda de él. ¿Y cómo fue que tú hiciste eso? Bueno, lo que pasa es que él no pega tan duro como decían, pero sí. Contra, de hecho, trabajamos seis semanas viendo videos de él. 
para hacer un buen trabajo, gracias a Oscar Maldonado, que fue el que siempre estuvo platicando conmigo, siempre me dijo cómo pelear, gracias a él y a todos salió todo bien. The main thing was, he doesn't hit as hard as people think that he does. And the thing was, thanks to Oscar Maldonado, he stuck with me and made me get in, in great, great condition. And that was, a, you see the end result. What was your plan to avoid his left hand and make him pay every time he missed it? ¿Cuál era el plan tú? Evitar su mano zurda y hacer que él pagara cada vez que fallara. Exactamente, porque él en todos sus videos vi que él contrarrestaba y donde noqueaba, era cuando los agarraba entrando, entonces le cambiamos que él entrara para yo poder meter mis golpes. Yeah. I've always seen him be a counter puncher, and when you, when you uh, charge him and you miss and he will counter punch you, this time we, we tricked him. Do you think that, were you ever hurt in the fight at all? ¿Estabas lastimado en algún tiempo, alguna vez? No, en ningún momento hicimos una muy buena preparación. Espero que ahora la gente sí crea en mí. Yeah. Uh, no, no, not, not at all. I was never hurt. Were, and, and, I, and I wish that people now would believe in me. There were a couple of times when he seemed dazed. Why couldn't you finish him off? Did you not want to take any risks that weren't necessary? Habían varias veces que le estaba un poco lastimado, estaba un poco mareado. ¿Por qué fue que tú no lo terminaste? Porque eso era cuando él noqueaba, si te das cuenta en sus videos, cuando él está noqueado, todo el mundo se avienta pensando que ya está, pero no, se recupera y regresa rápido. That's, pre that's precisely why we didn't charge him and, and get careless, because he does knock you out when he's kind of daisy like that, and we didn't want to take that chance. How do you see this as a victory, both for you and for your country, where there are so many outstanding fighters like yourself. ¿Cómo tú ves esta victoria para también como tú para tu país donde hay tantos grandes peleadores? Bueno, la verdad está muy feliz. Quiero mandar un saludo a todo México que vio esa pelea. De las gracias a toda mi gente y de las gracias a Ricardo Maldonado porque ganando él me regaló un Mercedes Benz. Ahí está. Yeah. I, I want to say hello to everybody in Mexico and I'm grateful to everybody and I want to thank especially Ricardo Maldonado because he promised me a Mercedes if I won and I got one. Bravo. <laughs> What's next? Do you want the match, rematch with Eric Morales? ¿Cuál lo próximo? ¿Con quién quiere pelear? ¿La revancha con Morales? No sé, la verdad, vamos a tomar un descanso. Trabajamos muy duro, vamos a pensar qué sigue. Voy a hablar con el señor, señor Ricardo Maldonado a ver si subo de peso. Digo, si me quedo en 26 o bajo a las 22. Yeah, uh, we don't know yet. We're going to see. I'm going to talk to Maldonado. We're going to take a long rest and we're going to see. Am I going to stay at a 26 pound or go back down to 122? Thank you very much for a terrific fight, champ. Al contrario, quiero darle a usted las gracias porque siempre ha sido un buen comentarista. Espero le haya gustado la pelea. He wants to thank you especially because you're a wonderful um, interviewer and I hope you like the fight. Viva México. Thank you very much. Jim, Prince, tough fight for you. Why was this fight different for you than all the other fights you fought? I don't know. I mean, maybe it's, it's, as I've told you before, Larry, but the, the answer you give me is you can't interview Allah. The fact is, my faith is still there to the maximum. If that's the way it's written for a man to go, that's the way it's written from Allah. I'm happy. I'm still confident. The fact is, he couldn't drop me. He couldn't knock me out. And I'm going out at, at this ring like a champion still. At the end of the day, I give him all congratulations and all the best of his, all the success in the world to him in the future. And uh, what can I say? I only have to get straight back in the gym and get back again like a champions like champions do come back and fight again it's written from a lot for that to happen and I'll t and I accept what is written that's all I can say was the delay coming into the fight do you think it had any effect on you no no de no delay made no effect the fact the fact is I got in the guy box probably better than me tonight and that's it the did he surprise you by the fact that he didn't charge you and that he did box you and make you be more uh, aggressive. I knew he weren't going to charge me. He would have definitely got knocked out if he'd have charged me. But the fact is, he's the pure winner tonight. I congratulate him. And that's it. He didn't plan them tactics. He planned to box. And his boxing, boxing skills paid off. Why couldn't you I land your big left hand more often and more convincingly? Um, I don't know. He seemed to have quite a few things covered there. And, and basically, every time I threw it, uh, I wasn't really too comfortable with throwing it often, but when I did, it connected sometimes, but you know, that's just the way it goes. Is this, how does this affect your career, your self-image as the greatest, as a guy who is going to retire undefeated? Muhammad Rasulullah is the, it's Muhammad Rasulullah and Allah, Allah is the greatest, you know. Muhammad Rasulullah is the final messenger and basically, my, I'm just so, so happy that 12 rounds was made tonight in, in no, 
like no problem at all. I train hard for the fight. But and how is it going to affect your career, do well, you how think? How can it affect me? Fighters, fighters get beat. He's been knocked out. He's been beat twice. This is my first time. I'll come back and beat him. I ain't got a problem. Are you saying you want a rematch? I'm, am I saying I want a rematch? The fact is I've got a rematch clause in my contract. I'm getting a rematch. <laughs> when do you want to fight him again? <laughs> it's not that I want one. I'm getting one. When do I want to fight again? Um, I don't know, maybe at the end of the year. I mean, I'm going to get back in. I'm going to have a nice, comfortable time with my wife and my kids. Trust me, this is the way I feel at this moment in time. I'm happy that I've done 12 rounds and come out safe. Allah has let me nice and safe and I've come out well. The fact is, I've lost the fight. I accept the loss, I accept the loss, and I accept it written from me, from Allah. That's the way a real fighter and a real man and a real champion goes out. But I will return. Thank you very much, Prince. That's why you see a smile on my face. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Larry. So the words there, George, of Prince Nassim Hamed as he responds to his first taste of defeat. Question, will he change the style now, tighten up, having seen what happened here tonight? And, and Emmanuel Stewart kept making the point that because his head is up and...